thank you again thank for you. staying with us. Lots of comments coming through. I'm not going to get through all of them, but if we can just mm -hmm. get your thoughts on the breaking news, bottom of our screen, uh, it's stage four blackouts as of this morning. Does that fit into the, the, the workings of the Reserve Bank? Do you feel a knock-on? Because obviously you talk about inflation, mm. you talk about interest rates. This is more about sentiment, isn't it, and damage to the economy. Where does the Saab sit on something like this, on, on the blackouts? Um, firstly, uh, a modern economy uh, needs uh, reliable uh, energy. The bulk of the problems that we have with respect to low growth have to do with the constraints to the economy of which electricity is, uh, is another. So when we look at the outlook for the South African economy, we then also have to factor in the impact of load shedding uh, on uh, the uh, economic growth uh, going forward. But there is another aspect which is worrying, which is that uh, with the load shedding, um, what you then have is that businesses have to provide for backup solutions. Mm -hmm. In economics, we call that dead weight, dead weight loss. So they end up providing for this. It's not like it is adding to... Um, There's no value add in giving right? a generator. The only thing is that it, 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 it will protect you right. um, and that you could continue. Uh, to operate uh, going forward. So it does impose a cost uh, on uh, the economy. And lastly, can you, if you are can a you small... Give us a number? Sorry, Governor, are you, can you give us a, mm. a number? If you say uh, it does have a cost on the economy and it is damaging, how damaging? Well, um, I think that our... The, the estimates from, um, uh, from my team uh, had attached the cost of the load shedding this year, which is already higher than mm. uh, what we went through uh, last year, at anything between 0.7 and 0.9 percent uh, uh, shaving off of uh, uh, growth. In other words, if this economy is growing this year at 1.9, which is what we, we expect from the Reserve Bank, it would have grown by 2.6. We could, have been, we could have been upwards of almost close to three. Yeah, yeah. So, 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 so it is, it, it is that cost that, uh, uh, that affects us. But also then uh, we have a situation where um, uh, the power utility says that, well, they, because they had had breakdowns, they had had to run generators and all of that, and as such they are asking for higher electricity uh, tariffs. Mm. Those higher electricity tariffs uh, feed through uh, into inflation. And maybe if we just take uh, people back. So when uh, we first had load shedding in 2008 and uh, it was said that uh, uh, ESCOM is going to be increasing electricity tariffs, everybody said that, well, these are once-off shocks, then there is nothing, you cannot respond to that. Well, the problem is that once-off has been going on since 2008. Mm. And as a result of that, people have now built it into their price expectations. And so it is now built into future inflation because everybody just now had right. expecting that uh, these electricity prices are going so, to be... So with that being said, Governor, I mean, where does the investment appetite now stand, uh, especially from, you know, you know, global investors to South Africa due to this impact of load shedding and the numbers that you're crunching down for us now? But the, the, most of the investors I had been talking to are what we call portfolio investors, uh, which will basically be the people who would buy uh, government bonds and would also be buying shares on established companies on the stock exchange. And so when they buy the shares of those companies on the stock exchange, they would then necessarily be analyzing to what extent would that company be affected by load shedding and whether they have got uh, adequate um, mitigating factors mm. uh, to... Uh, uh, scale through uh, the load shedding. And so, 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 so that is what you would find uh, that investors, uh, uh, investors uh, uh, want to talk about. And, um, uh, you know, in 2009, when I was, I was in the Treasury and, uh, and I had to do a roadshow and speak to the investors, uh, the year before, mm. uh, they were asking me about ESCOM all the time. And by 2009, I got tired and I told the ESCOM uh, uh, executives, mm. you are coming with me on the roadshow because I want you to answer the questions uh, yourself. And interestingly, at the time, 
in, it included the current chairman of uh, of ESCOM Mpomakwana, right. who decided that he was going to join the roadshow to be able to talk to the investors uh, at that time. That's we were, damage we, control. We were not we were not talking of stage four load shedding at the time. Uh, yeah, no, it wasn't. At but that, that's damage control. That's at why at you you called them to come with because you need to come explain your mess. I can't stand here and fix this. For you. <laughs> that was damage control, wasn't it? Well, I think they had better answers than me. <laughs> <laughs> well, South Africa might argue with you. We're not sure you <sighs> like the answers from ESCOM at the moment. Uh, can we just take a couple of moments, Governor, if you don't mind? I've got a whole bunch of tweets coming mm. through. I'm seeing them randomly. Uh, Cecilia Adams asking the Governor, uh, Morning, Gareth. Morning, Timza. Please ask the Governor, what must I do if I can't pay my bond? Uh, what must I do if I'm going to lose my house? You can answer it if you want, but that's maybe more a banking question. But what it does do, uh, Governor, is it brings to the fore the very seriousness of these interest rate increases where people's homes are now being uh, possibly repossessed mm. and having to deal with banks. Because then Tahir Sheikh Mohammed, thank you, Tahir, asking, uh, uh, tweeting me, saying, when can we expect interest rates to stabilize? Those two questions go together because if they don't stabilize, people could start losing their homes. So uh, stabilization, what's the forecast? Uh, no, first things first, um, interest rates rising comes as a result of rising inflation. Mm. And correctly, when South Africans say that we can't get, uh, we can't get, uh, we can't meet our means, inflation is eroding our income, the the cost of living is rising. The central bank has got to do something about uh, inflation. And unfortunately, in dealing with inflation, there is going to be some pain. And that pain comes as a result of uh, rising uh, interest rates. And I would like to bring this to the fourth about the importance of having low and stable inflation and what, uh, it, uh, uh, what it means. And I was maybe, as I said, that we are having a generation that uh, had been used to low inflation. And I want to jog your memory back to 1998, that in 1998, we had inflation rise into double digits. We had interest rates at 25%, hmm. 25% in 1998. And I'm saying to you that uh, when in 2008 the global financial crisis hit and inflation rose uh, once again to close to 10%, uh, to 10 interest rates rose. They rose like to 12.5% in, uh, in, uh, in policy terms. And I'm painting this picture so that South Africans understand that if you allow inflation to rise, mm. you are going to have to need higher interest rates to deal with uh, the inflation. So what we are seeing with the rise in interest rates is a, an effort by the central bank to say that we have got to deal with inflation. We are going to take pain now, failure of which would result in us taking even bigger pain uh, in the future. And you are seeing that evidence. Run, runaway inflation. I mean, that's you are, you are, you are seeing, get there very quickly, couldn't we? Well, you're seeing that evidence almost in the advanced economies now mm. because central banks there acted very late and they are having to move mm. with so much speed uh, and aggression because inflation is also running away from them. I mean, you are talking inflation of 8.2% uh, in the... United States. So would it be fair for me to say, yeah. Governor, this is prevention instead of cure? Is that what you're trying to do here? It's, uh, well, you know, uh, six of one and half a dozen of the other, still the, uh, the, the same thing. Mm. The point here is that you are facing rising inflation. Mm. And if inflation is rising, you have got to take steps to cap the inflation. And taking those steps to cap inflation is going to require certain, as you had uh, said, curative measures, and unfortunately, interest rates are a curative measure. What would have been uh, uh, preventative, what would have been preventative uh, would have been to get the cost structures in this economy uh, to be uh, manageable and to, uh, to, stay, uh, to stay low. But at the same time, the inflation that we are also uh, experiencing here 
is a generalized uh, rise in prices globally. Mm. And South Africa is integrated into that global uh, economy. Mm. And as such, when inflation rises elsewhere in the world, it's bound to rise here. Uh, 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 at home uh, uh, as well. So, Governor, if I may, for, for you then, where's the threshold of hiking interest rates? The threshold is the deadline in inflation back within the target. So once you see inflation declining back within the target and moving towards the 4.5%, which is what we actually aim for, that would be telling you that uh, the interest rate cycle has done its job, and if that is sustained, then it is time to adjust uh, to adjust policy. So the threshold here is always going to be uh, is always going to be inflation. I put it this way: um, uh, that at the moment the repo rate is at 6.25. Mm. Inflation, the most recent reading of inflation in South Africa is 7.8, and so that basically means that. Um, if you are a saver, uh, you are actually uh, losing yeah. because interest rates are below that. And of course, the questions that are coming here are reflective of the mm. societies we are uh, in um, uh, uh, today, uh, that uh, it's mainly borrowers that are uh, coming up mm. uh, with, uh, uh, with this. Understandably so, because when you adjust the policy rate to deal with inflation is the borrowers that are immediately uh, I'm immediately feeling right. uh, this thing. Uh, uh, Governor, if you may allow me, I mean, just besides w w uh, the borrowers, I'm sure you've been following the Transnet strike quite closely. And, 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 and you have warned before that you know, inc an increase in wage demands um, pushes up inflation. W what do you make of where the strike led to? Because various analysts had said billions had been lost already in revenue due to the 12-day long strike. But of course, now we understand Trustnet is reaching that agreement uh, with the likes of Untu. Can't comment on the strike, but the point you are raising, the earlier point in your question is the most important mm. one. You see, what you can't do is to expect workers to say that uh, we must accept lower wage uh, increases in spite of rising inflation. What you actually need, because, because we'd have to be compensated for that. Mm. What you actually need to do is to bring down inflation so that workers would have no edge to ask for even bigger uh, increases. And failure to contain inflation now could result in another problem uh, for us, what we call a wage price spiral. So inflation is running at uh, 7.8, and workers say that, well... Uh, we do not know inflation. What if this inflation comes out at 9%? I want a 9% increase. And because they have asked for a 9% increase, um, the price that has uh, increased prices in the market in, by 9% or more as well. And so you then have a situation where higher prices lead to higher wages and higher wages lead to, uh, lead to higher prices. There is something positive that had emerged now in South Africa, which we haven't seen uh, in a very long time. And it is workers saying that the Reserve Bank says inflation is going to be 6.5%. Therefore, we are asking for an increase of 6.5%. Now, t turn this uh, around. Imagine, what if the Reserve Bank was to contain inflation at 4.5% and the Reserve Bank says inflation is going to be 4.5%. There will be no reason for workers to ask for increases of 12%, of 9%, of 7 because there is confidence mm. that the central bank is capable of containing inflation. And in a way, when they say that because the Reserve Bank says inflation is going to be 6.5%, is in itself a vote of confidence in the central bank that what the central bank says goes, goes. I'm glad that Tums are asked about the, uh, the strikes and, and labor in the country. I've got a very good tweet. This is from Chris Hutton uh, on this saying, Morning, Gareth. Question for the governor. Uh, monetary policy, I'm going to read this as is, governor, and tell me if you can answer this. Monetary policy can only go so far in dealing with the rising inflation. We, we touched on that a moment ago, but exactly to Tums's point. Any thoughts on supply-side reforms? that could be implemented, and I love the way he phrased this, mm. perhaps labor or trade policy change. That's exactly what you were just talking about now. Let's go with the labor side of this. Are there policy changes there, apart from trade and unions and labor just wanting 
more money. Is there policy changes we could look at? Uh, lots of them which I do not have to uh, get into. If someone asked you to choose one, which one would that be? Uh, no, uh, you, can't, you, you, uh, you can't choose one. Uh, like all good multiple choice questions, yeah. the best answer is all of the above. Uh, <laughs> so, 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 so what you are having is that we have got the supply constraints and uh, he is right in raising those things. What are we doing with uh, trade policy? To what extent are uh, the measures that we are taking in trade policy leading to a rise in, uh, uh, in prices? To what extent are those measures leading to the South African economy being competitive and thus bringing uh, the uh, prices down? By the way, the stuff that we were dealing with, with ESCOM and so forth, that is also the stuff on the supply side, which if dealt with, you would be able to contain mm. uh, inflation. Just coming out of the uh, uh, these annual meetings of the IMF, uh, there is generally an agreement amongst policymakers globally that monetary policy has got to do its job. Central banks must be given the time to do their job and bring inflation down. But there is also an acknowledgement that this time round, inflation cannot just be dealt with by monetary policy alone. You've mentioned those supplies, that, and one of the dimensions that is coming is that fiscal policy has come, got to come to the party. So there has got to be an adjustment in the fiscal stances by the treasuries across the world so that inflation can be uh, contained. And uh, fortunately, fiscal policy is uh, uh, somebody's uh, job, and I'm sure we will hear from him what he is doing uh, in a week's time. Yeah. Yeah. It's a fiscal policy framework, and from there you can start making the changes and right. implementing the various solutions uh, as well. We're going to continue our conversation with mm. uh, the good governor, Lesetho Kanyako, joining us. Uh, it's still going to be for another 25 minutes or mm -hmm. so. Uh, we're taking a bit of a break from the governor now. Keep your tweets coming, and I am seeing as many as I can keep up with. So You're welcome to tweet me at Gareth Edwards SA, at ENCA. One of those, Tumza, which we'll mm. talk about when we come back, is still something that uh, boggles my mind. This is what happens when you get a BA degree. I can't always understand all these things. It's only a journalism degree. Is this concept of grey listing? Mm -hmm. We know black listing. Mm -hmm. What is grey listing, and what does the governor think about all of that? That's coming up in a couple of minutes from now.